Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Dashboards. In this video I'm going to focus on the waterfall chart. So I'm going to explain how to set it up and we're going to go through a few scenarios and also a few questions that are commonly asked about figures within the chart. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing is we're going to identify the waterfall chart. It's just across here in the standard visualizations. And we're just going to pull that in and we'll create a little bit of space. We'll just take that away from the side there and just create a little bit of space here. Now, before I start adding values here, I just want to talk you through the data set that I've got. So let's go across to the this view here. So what we've got is a list of work orders and for every week, we've got a snapshot of all of the work orders that are currently open and currently overdue, so in our backlog. So if I just put a filter on this date here, you'll be able to see we've got all of the work orders that were in backlog, so a record for every work order that's in our in our maintenance backlog on the 4th, on the 11th, on the 18th, and on the 25th. So that's going to give us our ability to look at changes over the period. So we want to look at changes between the 18th and the 25th. So how did the backlog change over that period there? However, the first scenario, I'm just going to use it to show the contributors towards the backlog in a particular on a particular week. So let's open this back up again and we'll start talking through the options we've got. So first of all, we've got the category, the breakdown and the value. So the category we want to look at is the department. And there's nothing going to happen yet because we haven't told Power BI how we want to look at that information. And we're going to look at it by work order backlog count. So the number of work orders in our backlog. So here's how it looks. So we've got, just to talk you through, we've got the, 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 the total at the end here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to switch on the labels. And I'm going to take off this value here. And what's happened here is that at the top, we've got the total number of work orders, which is 2,394. Now that total there, if we click on here, is for the latest date. Now remember we had three different, we had four different dates. So that is why that number is different. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to just add in the date as an option here. And I'm just going to choose the latest date here. Okay, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can just select it there, but if you want it to do, be dynamic, I'll just quickly show you this. You can choose the top N, top one, add in the date field again, and we want it to apply it by the latest, and then apply, and that'll automatically always choose the most recent date in the in that um, in that table. So the re most recent snapshot of data. So this is an example where we might want to just see the information for the most recent date. We could select any date, but we'll just do it for the most recent date. And we want to see how that 2,364 work orders has been split across the different categories. In this, in this instance here, it's department, because that's the category I've put into here. So that's the first use case. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Doesn't really showcase the, the waterfall chart too much. You could easily just have used a bar chart here, but it is an option if you want to be able to um, show the total and the actual corresponding values that um, that make up that total in one place in one chart. Okay, so that can be useful, and that's the first example. While we're here, we're just going to talk through some of the options. So general is fine. Legend. If you're going to use it in this example here, you won't need a legend because that only tells you that there's an increase or decrease. So there will always be an increase. So you could switch the legend off. The x-axis, there's nothing special here. The only thing that might be useful is if you can, if you want these bars to be a little bit closer together or further apart, then you can actually increase it using this or decrease it to zero and they're, they're completely joined up. So that's another option you can use. Um, the y-axis is another one where you can start you can define the start and end of the y-axis. So it's starting at zero here and, and it's automatically finding the, the most appropriate maximum for the y-axis. That's fine for this example. We'll probably will discuss that again in the next one. Data labels are switched on and everything else is, is fair enough for this example here. 
The only thing I will change is the sentiment colour. So we probably don't want that to be green. We'll change that to perhaps uh, this colour here. So still want to differentiate between the category values and the total, but make it a little bit more subtle. Okay, so that's the first example of just using a waterfall chart to show the breakdown of values that correspond to a total. Now, it is worth saying that there are a couple of limitations to the waterfall chart. And the first one is um, when we compare to a bar chart. And I'll just take a copy of this so I can show you exactly what they are. So if I just pull that down there, I'm going to change it into a bar chart. Okay, so we can see, and just play with this a little bit. Okay, so we can see there's a similar sort of idea. The only difference is that um, this is showing the values, but it doesn't show a total. Okay, so if, it, if a total is important to you, then you, you could add a card and you have that close by. Um, but if a total is important to you, then that is a good option. The other difference here is that sometimes if you've got a lot of categories here, so this isn't too bad because you can clearly see these are quite big, quite broad, and there's um, no trouble telling that that's engineering, that's drilling, and that's operations. This is a little bit easier because the the bottom part is right next to the actual, the actual start of the graph itself. So it's a little bit easier to read that. Now, the other thing that's a consideration when using a waterfall chart uh, is, is the conditional formatting. So if we go back in here, you'll notice that there's no options to add conditional formatting to any of these sentiment colors here. Um, there's vi nothing for the data labels. So there's very little conditional formatting options here. So if you did want to add some conditional format and to color some of these based on a target, then you don't have the option in the waterfall chart. You've only got the option to set the actual sentiment values for increases, decreases and totals. So that could be an issue, whereas if you go into this chart here, go to data colors, then you can set the color and you can use the, the conditional formatting if you want to set rules. Um, so just waiting to start up here. Yep, here we go. If you want to set rules or you want to use a field value, so that's a measure to, to format your conditional colouring or whatever, conditional formatting. So that's another reason why you might want to consider using one of these if you're just using it for this example here. Okay, so that's the first scenario. You just want to show one value, one total, and you want to break down some categories to show how they constructed or they contributed towards that total. Okay, so let's start looking at example number two, and this is where it gets interesting. So example number two is where we're going to add another waterfall chart, and we're going to show the differences between two dates. We're going to show two dates, and we're going to show how the categories contributed towards the change in the number of work orders across those two dates. So the first thing we need to do here is go back, and we're going to go and look at the values, which is our backlog count again. And the this time we need a date okay now that date is going to actually go in as a category okay so that's going to be the category and the department is going to be the breakdown and you'll see how this works okay so now what's happened is that we've got the dates so the 4th of march the 11th of march the 18th of march and the 25th of march and we can see between each one of those dates the categories which have caused an increase or increased in values. Now that is a net increase, a net increase. So that's important. And we'll talk about that later. And then we've got the the the, the end value in the period, which is at the 11th of March. And then we're going to go and see that we've got the same again between the 11th and the 18th, and then the 18th and the 25th. We've got a massive decrease here. So this is where the waterfall chart really comes into its own. And this is where we've got this increase and decrease in total. It's important to get these color codes right so you can visually see, yep, that was times when it increased and that was times when it decreased. So let's con let's configure this slightly. So I'm going to go across here to the format options. And I want to turn on the data labels. I want to see what these values are. So that's fine. We can see all of these values here. Still a little bit small. And I'm only really going to be interested in this change here between the 18th and the current 
maximum date in this um, data set that we've got, which is the 25th of March. So to do that, there's a couple of options. Uh, we could just go to this date here and just select those. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be dynamic about it and I'm going to use the top N and we're going to use the top two. And the top two values are going to be based on the date and it's going to be based on the latest date. And I'll apply that filter. Okay, so that's now just selected the top two values in a data set based on date. And the top two values for date is the 25th and the 18th. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the increase and decrease because in this example here, when we're talking about overdue work, an increase is a bad thing and a decrease is a good thing. So let's go in and look at our sentiment colors here. And the increase is going to be red. And we'll make the decrease green. Okay, I would probably wouldn't be too fussed about using green, but red and green are fine. We'll just leave them for, for just now. The other thing I want to do is just increase the data label size a little bit, just so we can see it. Let's try 14. Okay, so great. So we can see now a little bit clearer. We can see that the 18th of March, it was 2,394. Then with an increase, a net increase of 16 for maintenance, three for operations, two for drilling, no change for engineering and other. Now this other is another thing that we can configure. So other, if we go into the breakdown, is a grouping that groups all the other categories that you don't want out with this number here. Okay, so we've got five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then here's other here. So if I was to change this to be three, we can see we've only got the top three now, and then the others have been grouped together, and, and for some reason they've been classified as yellow, and I think that may be because some of them could increase, some of them could decrease, and um, this is the net change that the others have contributed towards. So the others have contributed to a net increase of two. But I'm not sure why they couldn't just have um, made that red. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, now, the, ob the obvious thing is to go and change it under sentiment colour. But if that happens to be a decrease, it would still be red. So it's probably just worth leaving it as it is. OK, so I'll change that back to five. That seems to be a decent value for this. And that is it, really. There's not much else to talk about in terms of setting this up. The other thing that's worth considering, actually, is, I'll just make this smaller, is these axis values here. Now, we did touch them on the first example, but you can see here it's automatically generated an axis. Now, this is another consideration. If you're using a bar chart, the recommendation is to always start the bar at zero. OK, so you can get a sense of the full volume of the bar chart and you can see that we tend to look at a bar chart and particularly if we're, if we're, if we're comparing bars on a bar chart, we tend to look at the differences between the two as being the actual totals, the totals. OK, so here you can see that's big and then that's about a tenth of the size. So with what we're thinking in our heads, just as you look at the, the, the visualization, that we've had a massive decrease. And that that's backed up here. It looks like we've had a massive decrease. But actually, over the period, there's only been a decrease of 60. And 60 out of 2,300 and, and odd is, is not that much. Okay, so in fact, there's even less of a decrease. I think it's, it's, I think it's only 30. Let's look here. Uh, it starts here. Yeah, anyway, so it's not a massive decrease by any by any stretch of the imagination. So if we were to go back and change the y-axis to start at zero, two things will happen. Now, you can see what's happened straight away is, yep, we've got the full magnitude and we can see there's very little change. Now, that might be important, but also it's really difficult to make any, any real kind of um, to, to, to get a hold of these and understand what these are or even see them 
I mean, that's slightly easier to see because it's, it's 50, it's slightly bigger. So if the changes are going to be quite small in comparison to the total, and we're more interested in the change, then I think it's it's okay. It's better two evils really to to be able to see the changes, and um, and just perhaps display this information in a different a different format. So you've got the total magnitude here. So yeah, it's not ideal. Um, so something to bear in mind as well. If you're looking at a, a waterfall chart that compares two values and the changes between the two values are very small. So another another consideration there. Okay, so that's the waterfall chart. Hopefully you've now got a bit more confidence in creating the waterfall chart and you know how to configure it and how to set it up and what fields to use and most importantly how to set up your data so that you can actually display it to show a difference between uh, the, the, the totals at a start point and the end point. And if you found this useful, then give it a thumbs up. I'm also always happy to hear any comments or any feedback and if you stick them in the comments below and finally if you want to be kept up to date with the latest videos then click the subscribe button and press the bell and that will mean you'll get a notification when I release a video and I release a video around, around about every week. Thanks again for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video where we will look at the waterfall chart again but look at these values here and how to explain and um, display these values here. So I'll talk to you in the next video.